naming and writing formulas for type 3 compounds. First, let's go over the other types of compounds. We have type 1. Type 1 is when you have a metal fixed charge, nonmetal. Examples of that. Sodium is only plus 1. So anytime you have sodium in a compound, that's going to be a type 1 compound. Aluminum. Aluminum, that's fun to say. Aluminum always has a plus 3 charge in a compound. So that is a type 1 compound. Type 2 compounds is when you are when you have a metal of a variable charge. An example of that is iron. Iron can either be positive 2 or positive 3. And to indicate that, we use a Roman numeral. So those metals that have multiple charges, anytime they're in a compound, they're a type 2 compound. Last today, we're going to type, talk about a different type, and that is a type 3 compound. A type 3 compound has two nonmetals. So for this system, we're going to use prefixes. So naming type 3 compounds. A couple things to note. One is a prefix is used to indicate the number of each atom present. So you're always going to use a prefix. There's only one situation where you don't use a prefix. Only one situation where you don't use a prefix. I'm going to tell you that right now. You do not use a prefix if there's only one of the first element. I'll repeat that. However, the prefix mono, which means one, is never used for the first element. So remember, type 3 compounds are when you have two nonmetals. What are nonmetals? You need to know that. So let's go over these quickly. So nonmetals would be everything we see here. These are all our nonmetals, the ones that are in blue. Then also we want to include hydrogen. Hydrogen is also an important nonmetal. So these, um, these nonmetals, when you have two of them, they make a type 3 compound. And this is when you use prefixes to name them. All of these are examples of type 3 compounds. Now what's interesting about type 3 compounds, we see there's, for example, one type 3 compound is N2O4. Well, there's also a NO2. Since nitrogen and oxygen can combine in multiple ways, unlike type 1 or type 2 compounds, this is why we use this prefix system. So we have SiCl4, two nonmetals, SF6, which is right here. These are both two nonmetals two nonmetals, and IO5, two nonmetals, ClO2, two nonmetals, and OF2, two nonmetals. So what are the prefixes? See, pre these prefixes need to be memorized. We're going to use them so much, and actually if you just say them a couple times, you're going to have them memorized. So let's go over them quickly. First we have one is mono, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, like a pentagon, 6 is hexa, like a hexagon. 7, now this one may be a little bit new, is hepta. 8 is octa. 9 is nana. And 10 is deca. Think of decade. So mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. So there you have the 10 prefixes that we want to use. Now, let's see if you remember. When's the only time you don't use a prefix when you're naming two nonmetals? Hopefully you remembered it's when you have one of the first elements. So let's do some naming. So name the following binary compounds which, can, which contain two nonmetals, type 3 compounds. The first one, BF3. So there's only one boron, so we don't use a pre prefix. So we say this one should be boron trifluoride. Next one, NO. And notice we don't use one if it's the first element. We use one if it's the second element, though. So we call this nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen monoxide. Next one, SO3. Notice everything we're listing here is a nonmetal. SO3. There's one uh, sulfur, three oxygen, so we call this sulfur trioxide. Next one, CO2. Hopefully everybody recognizes this. This is carbon dioxide. That's what we breathe out of our lungs. Next one, H2O. Now this is, we can call this water, but if you want to go by the naming system that's, that would be correct with the prefixes, we would call this dihydrogen monoxide, dihydrogen monoxide. Next one, N2O5, this would be dinitrogen pentoxide. Next, now we're going to write formulas for the following binary compounds which contain two nonmetals. Now what you can do is stop the video at any second if you want to try and write these down before I say them. So let's go through, go through these. First one, phosphorus triiodide. So it's going to be a P for phosphorus, an I for iodine, and simply a 3 after the iodine, so PI3. Next one, carbon monoxide. 
Now there's going to be only one of each element, and so it's just CO. That's what comes out of, this is the reason we have carbon monoxide detectors in our homes, and also one reason you have to be careful when you're starting a car that you make sure your garage door is open. Next one, nitrogen dioxide. So there's only two oxygens, one nitrogen, so this would be NO2. Next one, diboron triiodide. Di means two, so B2. Tri means three, so O3. So B2O3. Next one, iodine monobromide. So only one iodine and only one bromine, so IBR. Next one, silicon tetrachloride. So, one silicon and four chlorides. The last thing we're going to do is look at the ones we looked at before. Let's see if we can name these. So, in 204, this would be dinitrogen tetroxide. And we actually saw this one on the previous name. This is silicon trichloride. And this would be sulfur hexafluoride, diiodine pentoxide. And here we have chlorine diiodide. And over here we have oxygen difluoride. That's our introduction to naming two nonmetals together or type 3 compounds. If you have any questions, let me know.